Hi folks, welcome to the Prepared Homestead. This is Travis. Thank you all for stopping by to watch. I was thinking yesterday evening, last night, about this video, about what to talk about. And this is a subject that is near and dear to my heart, and probably many others, and that is children. But what about the children? Of course, you all know that I'm a father. Some of them are adults, moved out of the house. There's still three living at home. And I will flat out tell you the reason why I do what I do, not necessarily prepping so much, but getting on here and making videos, um, building community, really focusing on community. A big reason is because of my children and other children. If it wasn't for, for children, I'd probably at this point be living some recluse lifestyle away from the rest of the world and just say, well, let it all burn. Um, my wife and I have actually talked about that. If we didn't have children, that's probably what we would do. We just find a place as secluded and remote as we can and just, you know, watch the world burn. But we don't have that option. Many of you are in the same position. Maybe you have children, grandchildren, nieces, nephews, or you're just, you, you're in a position that you have a lot of influence over children. Um, maybe you're foster parents, wh whatever it is. Of all the things that's going on in the world today that we talk about every day on this channel, probably the worst or one of the worst things that's happening is that the innocence of childhood is absolutely being destroyed. You know, I, I'm a child of the 70s and 80s, and I'm not going to, you know, make some case that the world was perfect back then in this, you know, wonderful utopia. There were certainly problems. But one thing that's pretty, you know, secure, and you could say, is that for the most part, Generally speaking, children could grow up with pretty normal childhood, having a, a good amount of childhood innocence, for the most part. Today's world, it's just, it, it's a mess. It's, it's absolutely demonic. And that's not a word that I use too often, but uh, I don't know any other word that, that fits it. <clears throat> children are preyed upon and I know you could say well they've always been preyed upon by certain segments of our society and other societies yeah that's true but when I was a kid growing up when you were a kid growing up people that preyed upon children were hated by all of society they were hated people wanted to do bad things to those kind of people uh, even if you went to prison with rapists and murderers and all kinds of evil people, if you did bad things to children, they did bad things to you. The difference is we now live in a world where bad things that are being done to children is being glorified. And it's better for the children. It, it helps them mature faster. It, 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 you know, it, all these ridiculous, I won't even go into all these ridiculous things that they claim why it's so good for the kids to be you know basically abused by parents and teachers and people in their community preyed upon yeah also and of course that is really the biggest thing by far but there's also other things that are happening in our world today that um the most negative consequences are happening to children uh, they're they're losing the the ability and the opportunities to actually go out and live life the way we were created to and then what i mean by that is so many children are just so tethered to technology that you know there's there, there's there's no almost hope for them anymore they're 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 it's almost like they're not even human because they've become so engrossed in, in the screen, in the digital world. 
there is a belief, and I've come around to probably accepting this, that there is absolutely a war on children. And all these things that we're seeing happening is to serve a greater purpose, whether it be the, you know, preying on their, their innocence, uh, physically, psychologically, this push for technology is to basically, it basically works into this um, transhumanism, um, you know, great reset type of plan where in the future, and I'm not making this stuff up. I know this is going to sound pretty extreme for some of you that's not heard this, but you can get online and you can find lots of videos from people speaking at the World Economic Forum meetings or speaking for them because they work with them, They're, they work for the World Economic Forum, talking about how in the future, and really not that distant future, that, you know, humans will be genderless, humans will um, not procreate and reproduce in the way that you know, we do now that, you know, it'll all be uh, gender, uh, or not gender, of uh, <clears throat> test tube babies, and that people will be genderless. And if you think about the stuff that's happening right now with gender identity, it's pushing them, humans to accept this weird, muddled gender concepts. So I think that there's a greater war on children. There's also a war on, on how we teach children, how we raise children, how we educate them. The, the knowledge that they're, that they're able to have, uh, the basic human skills uh, that even in modern times, most people, you know, had at least some experience in more old timey skills. You know, even people that grew up in the city occasionally went out in the country and went fishing with their grandparents or camping in Boy Scouts or something like that. And nowadays these, children are being raised to to not even be outside and to not see other humans faces this is the world that we're living in and I believe that if we're here on this planet in this in this realm in this this world much longer we will start seeing some really negative repercussions of all this one of the simplest things is is that I think that they're trying to change how we basically become humans <laughs> meaning procreation and childbirth uh, there's a lot of evidence my wife and I were talking the other day and I said already um, and I can't I can't remember the sources so you can believe me or not but um, in just the last few years they have developed synthetic sperm synthetic eggs and a synthetic womb so when is the point that they combine all those and create a synthetic human? I mean, maybe they already have and we just don't know about it. It's very possible. These are the kinds of things that are happening by these people that think they're gods or think they want to be God or want to prove that they're as great as God. In fact, uh, again, one of the World Economic Forum flunkies, uh, Yuval Harari, has even said that that what they are doing will make them really no different than God. This is a reason why I prep to protect my children from this evilness, this demonic world that's, that's building around us. And so that I can teach my children what being human really is, what being a, a godly, righteous man and woman really is because they're not going to get it from the world. They're not going to get it from school. And anymore, they're really not even going to get it by going to Sunday school and places like that. There's, I'm sure, exceptions in churches. But a lot of these big churches nowadays, they don't even teach that kind of stuff. One of the greatest questions of, of humankind, this question that has stumped humans for all eternity has been, what is the meaning of life, right? We hear that all the time. What's the meaning of life? Well, if you can answer that, you must be a genius. 
Nobody knows what the meaning of life is. Well, that's absolutely ridiculous. From a physical standpoint, a spiritual standpoint, the meaning of life is that our purpose is to give, give glory and honor to our Creator. In a physical sense, our purpose is to reproduce. I mean, the most basic, we're to reproduce. In fact, it is the first commandment that God the Father gave to humanity after he created them. He said, go, go and be fruitful and multiply. And this is, in the most basic biological sense, what all life is doing. It's reproducing itself. It's making something better, improving. I've told all of my children, and I tell them this often. In fact, the adult children, I still tell them this. Don't be like me. Don't try to be like me. Don't try to emulate me. Don't. Be better than me. I tell them to see how I am, how I've lived, what I do, what I do wrong, and what I do right, and take that and be wise and become better than that. That's what we do in life, okay? We're constantly striving to be better, to improve. Improve our mind, improve our body, improve our soul, our spirit, our spiritual walk. That really, in the, in the most basic sense, reproducing and improving is the meaning of life. <clears throat> In fact, I, I believe that you could say that's exactly what the be fruitful and multiply command is. Think about it. You could say, well, the be fruitful part is about multiplying. Well, why would he say it twice? I personally believe the be fruitful means to be better, to improve, to, to have good fruits. And, and the only way you have better fruits, if you're ever a gardener or an arbor, you've worked with trees, especially, is you have to have a better and better and better tree. The better, the better the genes, the better treatment of that tree, uh, it'll have better fruit. So you want to be fruitful and you want to multiply. <clears throat> Everything that's going on in this world today is the exact opposite when it comes to children, when it comes to families. It's funny how Satan is a mere opposite image. God the Father. I know, I'm getting a little preachy in this video. A lot of you like it. Probably some of you don't. Maybe you all need to hear it. I don't know. That really is, is at its core what's, what's kind of going on if you think about it. We're trying to pervert and pollute the mind of the child. Remove them from the family setting, which is exactly where they were meant to be, where they were created to be. Remove them out of the influence of the parent and the family structure and put them into the care of the government, the social worker and all that kind of stuff. They're trying to completely destroy the innocence of a child, childhood, I mean, these people are trying to change the gender of their child at childbirth. It's absolute craziness. Exposing children to very, very adult things that just a few years ago, you would have gotten thrown in jail for. Now I said that we have adult children and young children and about 10 years apart, some of them, between the youngest one and, and the oldest one, a little bit more, but you get the point. And the difference in raising a child now than raising a child a decade ago even is a big difference. You don't have to go back to the 70s and 60s and the 50s and all that kind of stuff. I'm just talking 10 years ago. And really it's changed a lot in the last few years. <clears throat> this most likely will continue to happen. We're creating a, a weaker physical species, a weaker mental species, 
spiritually completely deficit, huge deficit there. We have to protect our children. We have to plan and prepare for our children. Uh, my wife and I have talked a lot here lately about how as the younger children grow, we're becoming probably more and more protective and controlling of their environment than we did with the older kids. And it's not because we weren't experienced enough or anything like that. Really, it's because the world is so much worse. I think about how my daughter at nine years old dresses. You know, all these so-and-sos, and that's about the best thing that I can say and keep this channel G-rated out there. You know, if how she dresses attracts them or just anything, or if they, you know, anything, any thoughts. I mean, I can't control their minds, but I'm definitely protective of that. In fact, um, our plans, my wife and I, our plans of when we go out is all surrounding protecting our children of what to do. You know, yesterday, um, my wife and I did some tactical firearm training. And part of what we were doing is if something were to happen, you know, my job is to defend, fight off the threat. And her job is to get the children out of the, the threat scenario, the threat area. And so we were training in that way. Unfortunately, this is the world we live in. And we have to take it serious about protecting our children. Do you homeschool? I mean, I, I used to feel bad about picking on people that don't homeschool. Saying, yeah, I understand, I understand. It's difficult, it's an inconvenience, it's costly, it's life-changing. But anymore, I'm not here trying to offend you and hurt your feelings, but I don't know. If you, if you aren't homeschooling your kids, if, you, if your children are still in public schools, I don't even know what to tell you. And I don't care how rural they are, how country they are, how traditional they are, it exists. I mean, I live in one of the most traditional, conservative, rural part of the country that there is. I mean, the, the local schools, the closest school to us has like less than 180, 170 kids in it or something, you know, 150, it's really small. I mean, it's really small. Um, the, the, the high school is, is tiny, okay? Uh, I think the graduating class of the high school is, you know, in the 30s or 40s or something. It's, it's, or maybe less than that in the 20s. It's really small. And even in those schools, I hear stories. My children aren't in them, but I still hear stories of all this garbage that's going on. So get your kids out of those schools, my goodness. Teach them at home. Build a good library of good historical and scientific books, biblical reference books, good stories for them to read because it's getting to the point it's not even safe to turn them loose in the public library because of the stuff that you'll see in it. Be selective and careful of the people that you allow your children to be around and the children that you allow your children to be around. If, they're, if those other children are allowed to be online and play video games and watch TV, you don't know what information they're telling them. Be careful of these things. Protect your children. I hate to sound like some Democrat, liberal, but really, right now, a lot of it is about the children. And we have to step up our game and be warriors, mama bear and papa bears, and protect them because there is a war against our children and against childhood. Folks, get your houses in order. Prepare yourselves mentally, physically, and spiritually. Thank you for watching. I'll catch you in the next video.